Life is precious, and we all have the opportunity of living it to the fullest. Unfortunately, so few of us know how to manage it all. How do we account for our opportunities? How do we account for our time? How do we account for our relationships, health, spirituality, homes, finances, influence, and careers? How do we account for the one life we have to live? I am so glad you asked. In this program, you will find answers to all of these questions and more. Welcome to the Account for Your Life podcast with your host, the healthy accountant himself, Jay Moore. What's happening and good morning. I want to welcome you back to another episode today, Breaking the Chain of Comfortability. Wow. Man, if you have not subscribed to the channel, um, go to YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel today, uh, especially after you watch this video today. And if you're watching on Spotify, iTunes, or any other podcast stations, make sure you follow and subscribe there. And you can also come over to um, YouTube as well. So today is a doozy because I've been asking God for direction. I've been asking God for direction on some things in my life. And, and, and so I'll give you some context. So the context that I've been asking about was because, you know, because guys, we got to learn like who we are and when we understand like why we do things, the things that we do, the things we don't do, the things we struggle with, um, what you'll discover is yourself. And so um, I'm looking at myself and I'm seeing like how I can be successful in things and then how I'm not successful in things and trying to figure out well, why am I not successful or at least why can't I, why, why can't I apply all of my success to all that I'm doing? And I'm like, well, what's going on? I want to understand it, you know? Um, and so I've been asking God for this and, you know, back in January when I started doing the push-ups, I knew the push-ups was something. I knew the push-ups was going to help me beyond the fact that, you know, the push-ups is going to help my body. Um, I knew that the push-ups would help me for something else, which is wild because I did a th I used to do a thousand push-ups in 2019, probably the first quarter. Um, most of the first quarter, I probably didn't do it every day, but I did a lot of days a thousand plus, and then some days almost a thousand. But I never, I didn't learn anything, but I knew there was something in it. So let, let me ask you this question. Have you ever had a deja vu moment? You know what that is, right? Deja vu. It's kind of like, I feel like I've been here before. Back in 2019, when I was doing the push-ups, I felt like I'd been there before. Like, man, there's something to these push-ups. There was a, a friend of mine, Robbie Kennedy. We used to meet every week, maybe every week or every couple of weeks. And we were having this mastermind together. And I was like, man, there's something with these push-ups. But I didn't understand what they were. I didn't understand how, how I could use them, not just for the physical aspect, but how I could use them for like, like a plan. Because I figured out some stuff. Here's what I figured out about doing push-ups. You ever heard the thing where, you know, you can't you can't eat an elephant all at the same time. You got to take one bite at a time. You've heard that before. So that's how I felt about the push-ups. Once I applied that to doing the thousand push-ups, I was like, well, okay. All I have to do is 10 sets of 100. And then in 10 sets of 100, all I have to do is... I. I can do 10 push-ups per minute for 10 minutes. And I can do basically, I mean, it take me 10 hours, 10 hours. No, it's not 10 hours, but I would have sets of basically in 10 minutes, I can do those first hundred. So I just got to figure out the times I'm going to do it. I schedule them on my calendar and literally I would get up at a certain time, go do the push-ups, come back and literally be done with the push-ups. Like, wow, it was hard at first because I was trying to do six, seven, eight hundred at the same, like, like in a, like in one sitting. I would do it, but it would be it, it would be taxing, like mentally and physically. So, OK, you break it down. I'm going to get to the comfortability in a second and breaking those chains and why it's so hard to break the chains. And so it's like, wow, so I did it. And so 2019, I had this thing and I stopped doing it. I stopped doing it because I didn't get it. it, it yo, it's weird, right? You know, how you can start something and you you know you're getting some out of it, but you still stop. I knew I was getting a lot out of it. 
and I still stopped. I just was like, oh, well, oh, well, I'll just keep working out. When had I kept doing it in 2019? Wow, this guys, this is five years ago. This is five years ago. Had I kept doing it until I got what I wanted. I mean, maybe it would take me a whole, maybe it could have taken me a whole year because there's a lot of context that I've discovered in the past five years. So it could have taken me longer to get there. See, a lot of times we want to break the chain. We want to break the chain fast. We think that just because we start doing something that, oh, we should get credit for it and then automatically break those chains. What I'm here to share with you is that that is not true. It will take an effort over time, over time, over time before those chains will fall off. And let's look at the words. Let's look at what does this mean? We're, we're going to look at the whole sentence, breaking chain comfortability. Those are the words we want to look at. Comf and we're going to look at three versions of comfortability. Let's start with break. <laughs> break. To, to smash, to split, divide into parts violently. What? I love that one. Divide into parts violently, interrupt, separate, cause to separate into pieces. So breaking is the process of separating or causing to separate into pieces. Breaking is the process of what, what does it say? Violently, where's that one at? Um, violently dividing into parts. So you think if we're going to break something, it's a process. Because I, anytime you see ING on the back of something, that means it's a process. So it's a process to break the chain. Now, what the heck is a chain? A chain. Oh, man. This, a chain. Something that binds together something that restrains it's a bond oh my goodness like that like when you think about a chain it's a sequence of items of the same type forming a line you know um a chain secures something a chain is uh, connected flexible series of metal links but that's not good let's look at, because we're thinking about in the sense of breaking the chains in our life of this comfortability, but I like the one, something that binds, something that restrains. So you think you, you got to go through a process to, to take something that is bound together and pull it apart. Since when, like when you think about something, I, anything, I got a Bible on my desk, right? I got a Bible on my desk. I got a bunch of stuff on my desk, but this Bible is here. If I wanted to break this Bible apart, that's not just going to come apart. I may be able to tear some pages out, but it's not going to automatically be just torn apart. I got to keep going. I got to go through a process to do that. Like anything you want to break apart, you're going to have to go through a process. So now let's think about, let's think about what the chains really are. What is the chains in our life that literally is causing us to feel comfortable? Like, like we can get to that comfortable in a second because that's the problem. That's the problem, comfortability. Back in 2016 when... I'd set a mission in a, a mission and a vision. And at the time it was like, Lord, I didn't pray. No, no, no. Back, I was no prayer involved. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I wasn't praying. I was just thinking. But I did say, man, there's something, there's a huge problem in this world. And one of the biggest problems that I've seen is mediocrity. People just wanting to be like everybody else. Not intentionally. No one, no one grows up and says, I want to be just like, I want to be just like someone who's you know complacent or mediocre. But it, but 
when you talk to successful people, what they'll tell you it's so easy to it's so easy to get to the one percent. It's easy to get to one percent because when you think about what people won't do, it's kind of like oh the push-ups. I keep going to the push-ups because the, the, the same person's not even going to not even going to want to think about doing it because they're going to say, well, I can't, I, I can barely do 10. I can barely do 20, 500. Ch- challenge yourself to like, I remember the time I said I was going to do a thousand pushups. I had never done that many pushups in my life, let alone in one day over and over. Never, ever. I'm the guy that, that when I was in college, you know, athlete, I never lifted weights. And I remember getting down to do push-ups and I could barely do 10. Barely, barely do 10. And I was 30, at least 30 pounds lighter. Somebody's probably laughing. You know, Jenny's watching. She says 30 pounds lighter. Yeah, 30 pounds, not 30 pounds, 20 pounds. About 20 pounds lighter. It's 185 and 205 this morning. So 20 pounds lighter. I could barely do 10. Seemed like it would have been easier, right? But it's a process. I didn't never went through the process of getting. I wasn't I wasn't inherently a strong guy. All right, let's let's get to this comfort thing. Um, what is comfort? Comfort, the easing, <laughs> the alleviation of a person's feelings, um, state of physical ease. Oh, that's oof. comfort. Let's see. What, what's another good one? Being relaxed. A state. A situation in which we are relaxed and do not have any physical, any physically unpleasant feelings. So it's a state of being relaxed. Let's think about it. Comfort is the state of being relaxed, being comfortable. What is being being comfortable is similar. And then comfortability, comfortability is things that are smooth. It's like. This is your ability. You, you made it comfortable. You made it so that it's it's it feels easy. It feels like, ah, oh, I don't have to go through anything to get there. This is just, oh, I don't have to ruffle my feathers. I, I'm about to get I'm about to get to what you really need to hear today. I know sometimes I, you know, I tell you a bunch of stories to get here just so you can have some color. So we're breaking the chains of comfortability. And the push-ups. Let me get back to the push-ups for you before I get you out of here. The push-ups served as a mechanism to show me one what I'm capable of. That's the first thing that it showed. I I made and I, I created an objective for my life. I'm gonna do 500 push-ups a day. And this time I'm not doing them so I can stop at some point. I'm really doing them to keep going. I don't know if I ever have to stop, but as of today, I'm just I'm doing the push-ups as a way of as a way of discovering more. So the push-ups is an objective that then helps to understand how other objectives can be accomplished. I'm gonna say it again. The push-ups serve as an objective so that that objective helps me to understand how other objectives can be accomplished. All right. So now I'm 30 days in to these push-ups. There's things happening. As you, you, you probably can see from... Right here, if you're watching the podcast, you can see that some things are happening right here in my upper body. Um, I've gotten stronger. I can feel that. Now, there was a lot of pain, guys. <laughs> I hurt a lot. I still have pain. I still have pain in my under shoulders, like, like right underneath here. I still have pain. I, I still have pain triceps. 
because that's a, a lot of what's happening. So I still have pain, but the pain is constantly subside. It's starting to subside a lot, but I know that at some point I have to increase, but we're not ready yet. So things are, things are moving. And now as I'm 30 days in, I'm talking to the Lord. Yep. I'm like, Lord, you got to show me. Because I know I'm successful. I can feel. Guys, have you ever felt it? I could. I can feel my success. I know how successful I am. It's just that what happens is sometimes I get in my own way. This comfortability, this comfortability is I got to break a chain. And I don't know. I didn't know how to break the chain. How do I break this chain? Then, Lord, just use yourself. You don't really. It, it, it's not even a chain. You, you're saying it's a chain. All you have to do is see. You need to see who you are because once you see who you are, it's like a superhero. When the superhero sees the problem, all they do is use their tools. They don't go and try and find another tool. They already have a tool. They just use the tool they got. Hmm. See, this is part of the problem. We think that we need something else. When all we have to do is use the tools that we have. I'm using my body to discover more objectives. See, I didn't know I was going to break any chains of comfortability, but I knew I was breaking the chain of comfortability, getting down to that ground, doing them 500 push-ups. That's hard. A friend of mine, Aisha, messaged yesterday. She says, wait a second, Jay, you, did I get the numbers wrong? I thought you were doing 200 a day. I didn't know you were doing 500. I said, where you been? She says, in my mind, I just thought you were doing 200. That's what I had in my mind. That's what she had in her mind because she said she was going to do 20. She's going to do 20. She says she ain't been doing the 20 because it, look, I'm not doing everything that I know I need to do, though. I'm getting to that in just a second because it's comfortability. I know it is a chain I got to break. So then Lord had me see something this morning because last night I was, I had wrote a bunch of notes. I'm writing stuff down. And then I went into a meditative state, just kind of sitting there and just tell, asking the Lord, Lord, just show me, show me your purpose. Like, show me your purpose this morning. Show me your purpose for my life. Like, like show me today. Like, show me how, how all this is working for my good. Show me. This is not for me. Show me. This is for your good, Lord. Show me. The, the amount of money that I have to make is not for me. It's for it's for him. It's for the it's so we can use it for what we have to use it for. See, being rich or wealthy or prosperous, guys, what we're doing is it's not for ourselves. See, yes, we we, we should take care of ourselves. We should have all we should even have all the stuff that we need and we should have the stuff that we want. Why not? If you you know, yeah, but then. It's, it's kind of like, okay, well, you got it. Now, can you get it for somebody else? Can you do it for 10 people? Can you do it for 100 people? Can you do it for 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million? Like, you got to help the people. So it's, it's like this. When the king gives an assignment, the king gives an assignment, and the king's just like, well, this is for my good. You'll benefit from it just because you're working for the king. This is for my good is, is what the king's assignment is. It's not for our good. See, a lot of times we think just because the king gave us something that is ours. It's a whole nother story. All right. So these push-ups and the objective. Lord, the Lord revealed this morning what the problem was, what the why it was, why I was bumping my head in business. Check it out. I grew up a certain way. And sometimes you don't know the things that are still walking with you, the things that you don't want that are still walking with you from your childhood. I grew up introverted. It's funny, my friend was over here yesterday. He said, man, Jay, you don't talk. I mean, I talk to people. Right? I'm probably more, I'm probably more active on I'm more active on camera. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not an extrovert by nature. I'm an introvert by nature, which no problem. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's just people. You got introverts and extroverts. That's just what the planet is built of. Now, most some of the most successful people are introverts. 
I'm just letting you know. So introvert, because introverts do most of the thinking, they come up with most of the ideas. The extroverts, they don't, a lot of times they don't think as fast or they don't think as long. So introverts do a lot of thinking. So here it is, I'm an introvert and like interesting. So introvert, but there's something in there that's caused me not to do a bunch of things that I should do in my life and in my business. Oh, you, are you ready for this? Rejection. 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 Come on now. Who here doesn't want to be rejected? I thought I was over rejection. I thought, like, if I'm on a, listen, if I'm on the phone with somebody, if I'm on a Zoom, Zoom call with somebody, and, and we're talking about helping their business, I don't got no problem telling them. How much is how much is going to cost? And, and even if they don't like the numbers, I don't have no problem telling them because I don't mind. I don't mind losing. So there's certain things that I can face. And there's certain things that I have a hard time facing. It's kind of like, you know, when there's things unknown, uh oh, all of a sudden I'm worried about the, I don't even think that I'm worrying about the rejection until this morning when the Lord showed to me. He said, oh, oh, well, the problem is, he says, you can do things, but when someone else is involved, then what happens is it could take longer. You could be rejected. They may not think the same way as you. And then you don't do it. See, the push-up challenge, let me tell you what the push-up challenge did. No, it didn't matter if anybody joined the push-up challenge. They did. People did join. But it didn't matter. What mattered was I allowed myself to get rejected. I didn't realize it. I allowed myself to get rejected. You know how so many people rejected the offer to join the push-up challenge? People, what? I, I mean, I bumped into people the same week I did it, and they were just like, I ain't doing that. Okay. I was just like, wow, that's interesting. I put it out there. It was Listen, it was there to get rejected or accepted, and if you didn't accept it, you rejected it. A lot of people probably saw it because a lot of a bunch of people said they would at least attempt. There's only a few people still going because it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to do anything over and over and over and over and over. We get bored. Who doesn't get bored? You get bored with this stuff. I get bored. I got I get I got bored with running, so I stopped running. I just started doing something else because I got bored. I wasn't as into it. One because. I mean, my knees would hurt, and I was like, I didn't want to keep going through the pain because I got bored. Not saying I shouldn't have kept doing it because I, I can think and say, man, I should have. The only reason I probably stopped doing it because I didn't want to lose my muscle. So that's why I stopped running because I was like, man, running just like for, to, to run and keep muscle is to sprint. <laughs> you got to be a sprinter, not a, not a, you can't do distance. You have to be a sprinter in order to keep muscle. Because if you just, if, I, if I'm just jogging at the pace I'm jogging, it's not even worth it, you know, so, but it's worth it. If some, if someone needs to lose weight and that's what their goal is running, walking a long time, it's great, but it was the rejection. And he says, look, who cares? Why would you even care if someone wanted to do what you were doing? Mo because they don't have this th the, the one, they don't have the same assignment. So that means they don't have to do what you're doing. They don't have the same drive. They don't have the same objectives or goals. They don't have the same vision. They don't have the same gifts. So why would you even care or have yourself being comfortable in a chain thinking that you can't break it when all you have to do is break it by saying, here's the activation, by saying what it is that you're going to do and you say it openly. <laughs> see, because when you say something openly and somebody heard you, see, it's nothing like you hearing it. But when someone else hears it, then they have a record. Then they can say, oh, Jay, are you still doing that? Like, I'm, I told Jenny, like, make sure I do these push-ups. And I remember, like, in the first few days, she was like, are you doing it? But it wasn't until I, I made it a I made it a bigger thing when I put it on Facebook. Now I can't stop. Too many people know about it. Wow.
make a bold declaration today. This is this is my plan. I'll make a bold declaration today. Bold declarations in front of people because now everybody's going to wonder if you actually accomplish it. Bold declaration in front of people. If you want to break a chain today, if you know, if you're feeling like you've been comfortable in your life and, and you're ready to say, you know what, this comfortability is for the birds. I'm done with it. No more. Make a bold declaration and then don't care who won, who wants to do it with you. Don't care if anybody, if anybody says anything, just keep coming back, talking about it. This is the Joshua 1 8 principle. You're talking about it. You're thinking about it. You're taking action on it. And you are transforming your life in the Joshua 1 principle, 1 8 principle. Guys, if you want to break the chain of comfortability today, make a bold declaration and not care. That means it's not just a bold declaration for you, but in front of people. Do it in front of people on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, wherever you want. Do it in front of your family. Do it in front of your friends, your closest friends, your distant friends. Do it. I will. Follow me. And you're going to see us build a multi, multi, multi million dollar operation. We've never had a multi million dollar operation in one year. Um, at several hundred thousand dollars year year over year, but not multi million. We will do that. You are a witness. If you're watching this podcast, I'm first making the multi um, making this declaration to you. And it's not about it's not about it's really not about all who is a part of it, except for the people who will be a part of it. They will be employees. You know, we'll probably hire five or six this year. There will there will be um, vendors. There will I mean, vendors, folks that we contract with to 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 to, you know, to produce videos, to 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 manage websites and funnels, to run advertising for us. Um, Folks will folks will help us with our podcast and folks will help us grow our YouTube channels channels with an S folks, folks will help us in every, we will, I mean, we're going to hire, hire some of the most, um, skilled CPAs and, uh, legal, legal people on our team and marketing people on our team that it's going to be out. It's going to be an outstanding, excellent operation. We're taking the healthy accountant, right? The healthy accountant, right? Is the, I, I would call it the engine but we're taking it beyond freedom. So we got two things. We've got the healthy accountant, which is me in this framework, Joshua 1, 8 principles, these frameworks, um, biblical success secrets that I'm install, have been installed into my life. And we're moving it and taking it beyond. We're going beyond freedom. Beyond Freedom Financial is our new business. And I look forward to serving you on all levels here because the the health accountant will have its own coaching program, books, um, 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 courses that people can take to enhance their life because this is where Account for Your Life is built on. You'll 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 be able to use the stuff and see the stuff that that's been developed on the inside of me where you can then take it and deposit on the inside of you. So that you can then go beyond. So that is what is going to happen in this life with these gifts that God has given me, starting with the gift, uh, gift to cut hair and the gift to, you know, I mean, the gift to just do hard things. I'm super excited about breaking these chains of comfortability today. God bless you. (laughs) God bless you today. And I hope that you got value from this program. If you did, please share it, share it, comment, let us know what you got out of it today. And um, let us know if your plan today is to break any chains of comfortability in your life. God bless you guys. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.